Hey, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss how to determine if you have network packet loss and how to find out which hop or router within that network path is problematic. Now, the first tool we could use is TraceRoute, which is a network diagnostics tool used to trace the route that data packets take from your computer to a destination server or website out on the internet. Windows itself includes a built-in utility called Tracer, which is short for TraceRoute, that performs this function, and here's how you do it. So the to, first thing we need to do is get to the command prompt, which we'll simply do by clicking in the search box, typing in CMD, pressing enter. And from here, we will simply just type in Tracer, and the website that or, or IP that we want to trace to. Now you'll see that this is quite slow because what it's trying to do is resolve the DNS names. So one of the things that you can do is simply type hyphen D before the host name. And then it won't try to do the lockups and it'll be a little bit faster. So what it's going to do is display a list of all the routers or hops that the packets take. And each line in this output rep represents a hop along the route or path. And it includes information such as the IP and the time it took for that packet to reach that hop. So the first column indicates the hop number and the next three columns show the round trip time in milliseconds for each of the three attempts to reach that hop. So it's quite a useful tool for identifying network issues, slow or problematic hops and understanding the path that data is actually taken to get to the destination, which is used a lot by network engineers. But you do have to keep in mind that some of these routers may be configured to not respond to trace route requests. So you might see the asterisks instead of uh, the actual round trip times for those particular hops. It's typically because the service providers are just uh, dropping ICMP messages or just simply not replying back with the ICMP time exceeded messages. Which is, you know, going in, into quite some detail there, but that's how it ultimately works behind the scenes. So you can see here that there's there's really no network issues going to google.com. Um, if, if any of these values showed to be quite high, then, and, and, and obviously the destination you know you're going to is kind of within within region, then you know that this is fine. Obviously, if you were trace route into uh, somewhere further afield, these numbers might be quite large. Like if you if, if you knew you would trace into a server in Australia from the UK, then yeah, you might expect these to be in the 300, 400 milliseconds. Um, but so you have to use your, you know, your common sense with this. One of the things I will say is by default, if the IPv6 stack is enabled now on Windows 11, it will try to do traces in IPv6 which is mainly not helpful so one of the things you can do is view the options for this command and if it is using IPv6 uh, you can actually just put the dash 4 as well to force it to use IPv4 the other method is which I recommend anyway if you're not even using IPv6 is to go to your uh, network adapter by typing network connections down in the search box right click in the network connection that you're actually using go into properties and then unchecking the internet protocol version 6 and clicking OK and that will ultimately just stop this uh, stop that default behavior now with Windows 11 so there's actually a much better tool called WinMTR which will help you determine packet loss when the issue is more intermittent, which many times it can be. It doesn't actually come with Windows though, so first we need to download it from a 
a reputable source. So the first thing we'll do is open up your browser and type in WinM WinMTR. And uh, just download it from Soundforge is fine. Click on download. It's a very small file. And once it's downloaded, extract the uh, the files. Open up the directory. I'm on 64 bit, so that's what I'm going to run. There's not many people using 32 bit anymore. And then simply open the tool. So Traceroute and WinMTR are both network tools that help trace the route that the network packets take, but there are some key differences. This tool combines the functionality of Traceroute and Ping into a single interface, providing both a simpler visual representation of the route and ongoing statistics. Instead of getting a snapshot of the route only at the time you execute the Traceroute, MTR provides ongoing real-time monitoring continuously monitoring the route over time. It keeps sending packets and updating the statistics for each shop in real time. This ongoing continuous monitoring can be very useful for identifying intermittent issues or changes in the network path as they occur. It also displays statistics such as packet loss and average round trip time as well, which makes it even more versatile. So to run the tool, just type in the destination you want to test in the field and just click start. So again, we'll use the Google example. It's best to let this tool run for at least a minute and in many cases, five minutes or more to get a better idea of any issues which may be there. But as you can see, it's uh, it's very similar to the trace route in that it shows all of the uh, the hops but now we have additional information such as the loss, packet loss information, as well as the fact that it, it, it's, well, it's giving you the best and the average latencies for all of the attempts that it's making. But as you can see that the, it is incrementing like every second basically. And because of that, it's gathering more data and, and it's just more useful. We're running to the same issue here where it says no response from host. That's very similar to the tracer where that would show the asterisk. And that's because that hop is just not replying um, because of uh, firewall settings. So the most important fields are loss and last. Loss showing the packet loss and last showing the latency. And ideally all packet loss would be 0% and last and average columns would show low latency and ideally less than 100 milliseconds but there are some exceptions depending on whether the ISPs are actually uh, running control play police and like I said so as, I, as I'm currently not really getting any network issues um, I'm just going to show you some Linux examples courtesy of Exavolt uh, yeah, th this is like I say this is the Linux example um, but it's ultimately the same tool. Here you can see an ideal result, right? All of them are showing 0% packet loss and all of the latencies are relatively low. Here we get a single occurrence packet loss, but that doesn't indicate an actual issue. As it states here on line six, there's a single spike of 89.3%, but that doesn't conclude any problems and this is mainly because that ISP hop in Hong Kong was was policing that traffic. No subsequent hops showed packet loss. It was only that one hop. And so this is not actually indicative of an issue. Sometimes you might get very small amounts of packet loss. While not great, it's still acceptable. It's a minor issue. And this can still occur, as you can see, due to ISP rate limiting. 
this is the main problem here it, when you have really bad packet loss you will get packet loss on the first hop within well you'll see you'll see packet loss on one of the hops within the path but then every hop after that also shows packet loss this is a problem and this is what you're looking for with this tool you're not looking for one offs you're looking for continuous numbers after the event occurs and sometimes you get these late latency spikes again this is not an issue this is very similar to what I was saying before we've only got a latency spike on one hop when it's persistently high latency then you have a problem there's no improvement after the the first time it occurred so uh, so that's it it's, it's a very good tool and uh, give it a try so thanks for watching I hope you find this one useful please like comment or subscribe to help me grow the channel and I will see you in the next video